Hello everybody and welcome to this Bigger Plate webinar. My name is Liam Hughes and I'm the founder of Bigger Plate and I'm going to be talking to you today about mind mapping for students in this uh, simple introductory webinar which I hope will inspire you to go and explore mind mapping whether you're a student or an educator. So first and foremost let's have a quick look at a brief welcome. As I've already said my name is Liam, I am the founder of biggerplate.com uh, if you'd like to contact me uh, after this session, if you have any questions or you want to follow up on anything particular, you can do so at liam at biggerplate.com. That is my email address. and I'd love to hear from you. You can also follow me, find me and contact me on uh, Twitter. My handle there is biggerplateliam. That's if you wanted to get me direct. Obviously, you can also follow the main biggerplate account, which is just at biggerplate. So what is uh, biggerplate.com for those of you who may not be familiar? Well, we're talking about mind mapping for students today and Biggerplate actually has its origins in my own experience at university. Um, uh, Bigger Plate started as a direct result of my experience as a student. I was a, uh, a very average student. I wasn't really very engaged with my university degree uh, and I was quite far behind in a lot of things and I hadn't really been working very hard. Uh, I had some impending exams and lots of things to try and learn very quickly uh, and really that's where mind mapping software uh, came in. I'd, I'd never used it before, never even heard of it before uh, and I was introduced to mind mapping software and, and really it was like a light bulb going off for me. Uh, this way of working and organizing my information it, it really um, unlocked if you like the information uh, unlocked uh, my studies really and and saved my degree is what I've always said I, I don't think I actually would have been able to pass my exams and get a degree had I not discovered mind mapping software um, so that really provided the idea for bigger plate the original idea for bigger plate was to create a resource for students specifically uh, where they could get their academic uh, subject information but in a, a uh, mind map format, mind mapping software format specifically. The idea being that they could get a skeleton of information about a particular subject and then uh, develop it, work with it, get rid of the bits they don't need and, and add to it as they needed. Uh, and from that original idea in 2006, the website launched in 2008. So that's the, the origins of Bigger Plate. Dot com. What about today? Well, today Bigger Plate is a little bit bigger and, and sort of better known than it was back then, uh, but still at the heart of it is templates. So we have thousands of free mind maps uh, for education, business, and pretty much anything else you can think of. They are available to download for free, and you can also share your own mind maps for free. So well worth taking a look if you haven't already at the mind mapping library to see what's in there. We have a lot of tutorials. We provide a huge range of online tutorials and webinars to try and help people, not just students, but people in business, education, uh, at home, get to grips with how to use mind mapping in very practical ways. So loads of great video content that you can watch live or on demand uh, to help you understand what mind mapping is and how you can use it. And similar, uh, Bigger Play also provides training services for uh, businesses, educationist institutes uh, in the form of live webinars and workshops. So if your institute is maybe interested in, in uh, helping students understand mind mapping a little bit more, then we'd love to hear from you. So this webinar is, is a very simple introduction, but who's it for? primarily it's aimed at students so hopefully some of you on the call today are uh, studying at college university maybe some of you are even at high school uh, I, I don't pretend that we can uh, serve school pupils quite as well yet uh, we know that mind mapping is being used a lot of colleges and universities and that's really where my experience of it was all those years ago so uh, hopefully students of all ages can get benefit from this but it's really going to hopefully be applicable mostly to your college and university age students Similarly, I'm hoping uh, educators from schools and universities will be able to take in this webinar uh, and take some of what I show you and uh, go and apply it to your classrooms, your lecture theatres, whatever it might be. You are the best placed people to go and show how mind mapping can be used in education. So I'm hoping I can give you some, some thoughts and ideas today. I'm going to look at, at three specific uh, mind mapping uses for students, uh, albeit briefly. We're going to look at note taking, knowledge building, and then essays or assignments uh, as just three use cases for mind mapping that I think are really uh, practical and beneficial for students. At each stage, what I'm going to do just to try and uh, 
build out a little bit more information is give you a little bit of a, a setting around um, background around some of my challenges around these different use cases. Uh, and then we'll explain how mind mapping helped me and then hopefully give you some ideas and, and advice on how to do it yourself. So that's the structure of our session. We're going to be looking at these three things and each time I do it, I'm going to be looking at these three kind of components. So let's uh, get stuck in. Uh, before I do, it'd be great to know who's on the call today. I can see you've got a nice number of participants. So let me know where you're coming from today. Uh, and if you have any questions, I should have put that probably in here. Uh, questions, oh, questions, spell it correctly, Liam. Questions, uh, please add anytime. So if you want to add, <coughs> ask me any questions as I go through these sections, please do, and I'll, I'll try and uh, answer those as we go or wrap up at the end. So let's start first off by looking at mind mapping for note taking. So note taking is something that some people are good at, some people are not great at. I certainly was not very good at it. So my challenges back at university and really to the same extent now when I go to conferences or, or business lectures or anything like that, uh, I have a sort of same set of issues, albeit I think I'm slightly better trained now. But at university, I certainly suffered from a slightly short attention span. I would get distracted quite easily uh, and I would go into lectures or tutorials with the best uh, intentions of listening and note-taking diligently and that would fall off pretty quickly. Um, I have very bad handwriting and that's still true. I get mocked by my family quite a lot for having handwriting like a child. Um, but what that meant for my notes is my notes were very messy and at times it actually became quite difficult to even read by my own notes, particularly once time had passed. So maybe as I'm coming up to those exams and I'm rereading or trying to reread notes from six months ago, I don't even have the recent memory to try and help me understand what it is I've scribbled there. So the, the lack of quality handwriting was an issue for me in my notes. And then there is a, a challenge which isn't really my own fault or your own fault is that the style of delivery of lectures or lessons can be very, very different and highly variable. Some lecturers or teachers will jump around a lot. Uh, some will be fast and, or slow. Some will be interesting or not interesting. So your note taking having to adapt to these different styles of lecture is, is very tricky as well. And what you can do sometimes might not be possible all the time. So here's how mind mapping kind of helped me back then and continues to do so. I would go into a, a class or a lecture with a, a blank mind map and, and really what I'm doing is I take my notes in a mind map is two things simultaneously. I'm not only taking notes, I'm just capturing a few key words and, and putting them into the mind map, but as I'm doing that, I'm also helping myself make sense of that information. I'm having to figure out what belongs together and the hierarchy of that information. So regardless of how it falls into the mind map, as you start to structure the information, you're simultaneously making sense of it whilst all the while while still taking notes and scribbling down. The difference in the mind map versus my, you know, my pen and paper or my Word document notes is I'm actually starting to structure that information, whereas the linear types of note taking, it doesn't necessarily help me see the connections and the hierarchy and the structure beneath that information. What I found very beneficial about mind mapping and still do in software terms is I, I don't need to try and capture as much. I can just use some keywords and, and I'm not tending to write too many full sentences. That very practically just makes it easier to keep up, but it also means it's easier to manage the information as it falls into the mind maps. As I alluded to earlier, there's a structure in a mind map. By putting things into this kind of tree structure that you see on the screen now, I'm giving that information a natural hierarchy. And that means my information or my notes are always in context and relation to something else. So you get away from this idea of isolated information where you see a little scribble on your page or maybe a note in your written document. And you really have no idea what else that is relating to. Uh, unless you start dribble, drawing lots of lines or squiggles or, or references, it's sometimes hard. Whereas in the mind map, it's, it's kind of implicit. It's obvious what relates to what because of how it's structured. As your mind map is being built, one of the great things about it, particularly in, in real time, is the ability to capture things first and make sense of it later. And you could do that either in the lecture or after the lecture. So you can just type things into your mind map and, and build out your topics, add information, uh, add more, don't worry about typing errors, uh, build out further. Now. This might not make immediate sense here in the moment, but at the moment in the real time, you're trying to just capture information. And what you could do after the fact, 
is maybe when you're back at your uh, room or afterwards in a library is actually just review those notes tidy it up and and reorganize very easily depending on what you think makes more sense so just reorganizing information very quickly after the fact not really having to go through a whole process of reading back on notes and transcribing them into something tidy you can just look back at your mind map notes and tidy them up and elaborate on them right there and then so the ability to edit and move capture first and organize later is very powerful so how do you actually do this yourself well this is a tr slightly tricky thing to demonstrate in a webinar but I always want to talk about it even if I can't demonstrate it pretty well my, my kind of key advice here is to really just go and try it so let's think about two types of lecture maybe you've got some uh, lecturers or lessons that are quite well structured quite well organized and then you've got some which are maybe less so so let's think about how you might work through this in a, in a structured lecture so a structured lecture or presentation when you're the recipient, you're in the classroom listening, has a very clear beginning, middle and end. <clears throat> and I always like it when a lecturer would say things like, in this session we're going to look at three things. That gives me an immediate start to how to structure my mind map because I would immediately put into my map thing one, thing two, and thing three. And then as the lecturer says, continues so let's talk about thing one first thing one is important because and they keep talking and you keep building out your map info goes here you add more detail maybe there's a little quotation that you think is quite helpful maybe they say something particularly uh, memorable that you want to remember uh, so you can just build out your map there and then the lecture is hopefully going to move on to thing two and you repeat the process build out your notes continue remembering what I said earlier of course that as your notes build out they may not be perfect in real time as you take notes and listen to the lecturer but what you can do afterwards is obviously go and back and restructure reorganize and pull out the key piece of information or even remove stuff that you think actually that wasn't as important as I thought it was going to be right at the start so we start to build out our structure based on what the lecturer says or the teacher says and that's going to give us hopefully a nice coherent mind map in essence, the map then starts to sort of mirror the chronology of the lecture. So I always suggest if you start a new mind map like uh, this, for example, that you you build your notes sort of clockwise. And this is kind of almost going to imagine if you start your lecture with a blank map. Let's just create one here. <coughs> so we, we start here, lecture, and the lecture begins maybe with an introduction. And then they go on to thing one, then they go on to thing two, then they go on to thing three, thing four, and maybe questions at the end. So what you can think about is almost like you're looking at a clock face. So most lectures are probably going to be somewhere in the region of an hour. So you can think about the minute hand of the clock going right the way around the clock face, coming around this side and finishing up around here. So building your mind map clockwise like this, if you follow the lecture flow and the lesson flow, it means your things that he covers at the beginning or she covers at the beginning are going to be here and then here and then moving around with your conclusions kind of over around in this corner. You'll notice my presentation map follows that exact sort of flow. So using that sort of structure is going to help you to follow the, the, the structure of a session that's pretty well structured. Um, <clears throat> Here's an example just to give you an illustration of a, a notes that I took, not at university, but at a, a more recent event. I went to a, a lecture or a presentation by the author Daniel Pink, uh, and this is a, a map on, on biggerplate.com. So if I just log in here, you'll see, hopefully, I can just view that map, and we can say, open that up at MindMeister. And what you're going to see here is because uh, Daniel Pink is a, a good presenter, uh, he had a pretty structured presentation. It started here with introduction and I was just taking notes around his, his uh, presentation. Now, again, I'm not writing big, long sentences. I'm just giving myself little headlines and, and sort of keynotes really to try and remember. So there's a lot of information in here. Uh, I won't go too far into that, but you'll see he then goes in to talk about his kind of big headlines, patterns of the day. Uh, the power of breaks, ending, energize, and wrap up. So that chronology and that clockwise structure and then finishing up here with questions, that's how I made my notes in this more recent example. But the principle is exactly as I've described for your university or high school uh, sort of lesson structure. To build your maps clockwise and, and follow the structure, that will work really well for you. 
in unstructured lectures, maybe where the, the lecturer or the teacher is more of this type, they say, in this lecture, I'll ramble for 60 minutes and expect you to make sense of my brilliance. Uh, we've all had teachers and lecturers that feel a bit more like that. Uh, I'm sure they are brilliant, but sometimes it can be very, very difficult to uh, build something or, or note take in any sort of structured way. This is where your non mind map notes are really going to struggle because it's just jumping around too much. It's very, very difficult to connect the points on your page three of notes with your page eight of notes. So here's where mind mapping could be really helpful. And, and in this sort of session, I would encourage you to think maybe more about concepts over chronology. So don't think so much about what came first, then second, then third. Just focus on maybe some of the big headlines and the little headlines and just start capturing anything. So group whatever you can and then keep resorting and reorganizing the information. Um, it's easier said than done, I know, um, but it's a good way of just getting used to capturing information. And as you do so, the structure will emerge. What may initially have seemed like a big topic <coughs> may not be talked about again for the rest of the lesson. So actually you start to realize that that big idea was a small detail and you maybe move the small detail under a bigger idea and you have a headline and, and small details. And you're also going to start to see what is irrelevant stuff. So as your mind map builds, rather than this kind of step where you've got introduction thing one, thing two, you might just have someone who just starts talking and they just say key concept here. And then you might have another idea, uh, build out that, more information here. And you might think that this is a big main topic that wants to come off your, your sort of main topics here like this, but actually you might, once the, the lesson continues, realize actually this is really a subset of this key concept here. So I'm not gonna uh, build that out anymore. You want your big concepts, your big topics to be in this middle, uh, the sort of closest to the center and then just note take and build out from that as you will but it's in an unstructured session this is a really good way of, of keeping uh, information captured and not sort of losing interest because it's so hard to follow just keep capturing the structure will emerge and you just keep moving topics around as you do that you're also going to be able to refine it you're going to be able to remove the irrelevant information if you find you've got a speaker who maybe goes off on a tangent and they start and you you can type and follow the thread because you don't know if this is going to be relevant or not so you can just follow the thread in your mind map keep going more information and then when the tangent finally finishes you might realize actually this is really irrelevant so you might delete it or you might just again put that under very sort of small topics somewhere further out but we don't want this tangent taking up too much space so the great thing with mind maps as a note-taking tool is they can follow out these threads so if the the topic goes very far off off piste if you like you can always just pull yourself back to these big key concepts so keeping track of, of where you are capturing everything but be willing to then remove it refine it decide if it's relevant and be quite brave in taking things out remember these are your notes so if six months from now you think is this information going to help me pass an exam take it out if it's not going to help you take it out that's then going to sort of really help to surface and show the big topics you're going to be hearing the things that are mentioned more often the things that the speaker keeps referring back to and those are the topics that you really want to have in this kind of uh up the in the center these these main topics you might want to make a little bit more uh, stand out you might want to color them in somehow so they really stand out as your main topic so even if the lecturer might have started over here and then jumped down here and then jumped over here and gone on a tangent it doesn't really matter the order of which they came up with these concepts you've got to capture them one way or another and build out something useful for yourself so there's a quick sort of note taking over you again it's a difficult one to demonstrate but um, I'm hoping you're just going to give this a try some tips, trust your brain. Your brain will actually remember a lot more than you expect. So when I go and look at the, uh, the Daniel Pink mind map, this one here, even though I've only written a couple of words here and there, I, I can sort of, I could probably give this presentation, not as well as him, uh, but I could probably give you this information pretty coherently because of how I've captured it coherently. And my brain will fill in a lot of the blanks, even though I haven't written everything he said word for word. So trust your brain to remember more than you probably expect. Because you've got just a couple of words, but everything is related to something else, every piece of information in your mind map has more context around it. And that helps your brain to fill in the blanks because of all the information surrounding this particular item. So trust your brain and trust the map to help you a little bit. 
Another tip is to use the icons within mind mapping software. Whichever software you're using, they'll all have some sort of icon uh, function that you can use. And this can be a good way in your notes, either during the session or after the session, to just give yourself little markers. For example, you might create little markers here that say uh, one icon that maybe means I don't understand this. So you could use a little icon to represent that, uh, whatever that might be. Um, or you might use icons to mark up key information. So maybe flags or these little stars to say, this seemed like a really important topic. Maybe I need to go and explore it further or something like that. Other things you might use. I was often using a little flag to, to remind myself, maybe I didn't understand something. So I need to go and have a look at it later. Or maybe I've written this person's name wrong or this reference wrong. So have a look back at this, Liam, and make sure it's accurate and look for additional information. And then there's also other things you might do, like have a little uh, marker to tell you here's, a, here's maybe a, a book reference or, or something, a, a reference, a document or something that you think is going to be particularly useful to you later. And that, again, is going to mean when you come back to look at these notes and maybe you won't look at your mind map for several weeks afterwards or maybe even months, when you come back into the map, you're going to have these little markers that tell you this was an important topic. These were the key things. And this is uh, sort of where you can use the mind mapping software to really surface that key information. The most important thing about uh, note taking with mind maps is to just practice. You will get better. Um, I'd suggest sort of practicing, you know, even straight away, you could mind map a TED talk or a presentation on YouTube, uh, whatever you can think of really, just go and, and set up a presentation, listen to it and, and start note taking. Just start with that blank mind map and just see what happens. Just trust yourself to just keep capturing. Even if your map starts by just adding lots of things around the main subject like this, you might then start to see, okay, well, those two things obviously are part of topic 12. And these two things are obviously part of topic nine. And immediately you've started to get a better structure of information. So, so just go and experiment and try it out yourself. So note taking with mind maps is our first sort of big use case for students. And I'd really recommend you go and just explore and, and give it a try. If you can improve your note taking with uh, mind maps, then what you've also given yourself a great chance of improving is your knowledge building. So really started to understand a topic or a subject in, in its entirety and all its component parts. So good quality notes will feed your understanding of your subject matter. And that's really where we then get down into this next stage, which is what I would suggest is knowledge building. <clears throat> so my challenge at university around knowledge building was Primarily around exam preparation, I, I had a lot of things to revise or study, uh, a lot of content. I studied sociology and I'm a very slow reader, so I had to cover a lot of thick books and I didn't really understand it and I was a very slow reader. So I had a lot to do and not much time and I didn't really have the speed reading abilities to get through it. I also had very weak foundations for my knowledge building because I had taken such poor notes. Uh, I had um, the bad handwriting, I, I sort of would just decide to annotate my notes a certain way one week and a different way the next week, or quite simply, I didn't have any notes. They were, were never taken in the first place or I lost them. I also didn't do a good job, which I think is probably quite common. I, I expect it's a lot easier now for students because everything will be on computers. Uh, weirdly, when I was at university, laptops were still in the minority in the, in the lecture hall. So um, I, I expect this is a better system now, but Again, I was always kind of trying to struggle. Where did I put those notes? Did I actually have any? And I was losing a lot of time searching around for those notes that I may or may not have taken. Importantly, in terms of getting your, your uh, subject really mastered, uh, I was really not connecting up my notes and, and things weren't connected up in a way that was gonna help me understand which notes were with which lectures and also helping to connect the concepts between the different lectures and between my notes. But how can mind mapping help with improving our knowledge building of our subject? Well, the first thing was it just helped me get off the blank page. When I sat down and thought, oh my goodness, I've got an exam coming up and I don't know anything. What I would do is just start with a blank mind map and just start writing out, what do I know? So again, to just go back to my, my sort of slightly useless example here, I would just start with my subject and say, what do I know? And it might be tempting to say, well, I don't know anything, get a bit depressed and, and worried about the exam, but actually just think of anything. Can you think of a, an author name? Right. So for me, you know, I would be thinking, right, Karl Marx, that was a name that was coming up a lot in my lecture theatres. And then I would think, OK, well, there was another guy and his name was Max Weber. Okay, So maybe I'm going to put a little box up here called key figures. 
And maybe I can't think of anything else to say about these people right now, but I know they are some key figures. So I'm starting to build out my knowledge map based on key figures, and I'm going to move that over here. And then I'm going to start to think about maybe some key concepts. Again, may not know much off the top of my head, but I know that capitalism was pretty key. And even if I didn't know much, I could start to build out something that's going to make me feel a little bit better, get off the blank page. And also I know what I can go and look up now. So, okay, key figures, go and find out my key information about Max Weber. What was his era? Uh, what was his key writing? Uh, what were his key concepts? And I could just start to build that up and just taking one thing at a time and building out from a blank page of just anything that comes to my mind, I can start to build out my subject matter. So getting off the blank page is a great place to start. Gathering whatever you know, even if it's not much, it's really great giving yourself a signal. I do know something and it's giving yourself sort of scaffolding for your learning. So it's going to help you understand where are the gaps, where is more information needed and also where to go look. By just adding a few things in, you start to see the gaps. You'll start to understand, well, I know this author, I know his books, but I don't know actually what his key concepts are, or I don't know what the key counter arguments were. This is another place, again, where all those notes that you've been taking can also then start to become better connected. So converting those notes that you took in the, the previous section that we talked about, you can start to connect these up a little bit more. And that's really going to start to help you understand the topic overall. One of the problems we have is we're, we're sort of taught in younger school to sort of pass tests on sort of multiple choice and these kind of things. When you get into universities, you're going to have to get a sort of wider, more holistic understanding of your subject and your topic. So to better understand these things, both the details and the big picture stuff, you're going to need to connect up your uh, detailed notes with your big picture concepts. And mind mapping can kind of help you do that, particularly when you're using the software. So how to do this yourself? Well, <clears throat> this is the first thing here is a suggestion uh, I wish I'd done at university, but really I only thought of this many years later. Um, but I would suggest creating a, a subject master map. And this may reflect maybe the module structure of your course. So maybe your sociology course for the semester has three modules. So it might reflect that. And again, in this map, we're going to just focus on key concepts and headlines. So for me, I would create a, a master map of sociology. And I'll show you an example of that in, in a second. Once you've created your master map, we're then going to connect that master map with specific subject maps. Now, these might be from your lecture notes, but it's also going to be where you're going to find the topic detail. So it's going to be building on those lecture notes, filling in the gaps. Maybe you, you didn't catch everything in a lecture, but you've then gone and found the information you need. You've built out some key information. You've gone away and done some research. And we're really going to start to tie things together so that wherever we need to go, we've got sort of maps of maps to navigate us to the key information. And having those maps is going to give us a sort of schematic for understanding our subject as a whole. So a few tips before I just show you some examples. Using topic notes and links can be a really nice way of adding more detail but keeping the surface of your map clear. So if we're using XMind, for example, I can just say to add a note to this topic. Add lots of extra information here, but keep surface level clear. Now all good mind mapping software will do this and what this is really useful for is maybe you capture a little quotation. You don't want to write a huge long block of text in your map. You want to keep the surface of your mind map just focused on keywords, not big long sentences. But the ability to put big chunks of information below the surface in these notes, for example, is very, very powerful. And as you build up your detail maps, for example, I would quite often paste entire paragraphs of journals I had found that were going to be useful or, or big quotes that I thought I might be able to use in an essay. But you see, it's just hidden beneath the surface there. It's not cluttering up my map, but I know I've got the information there. The other thing we can do is use links. So, uh, for example, I can hyperlink to websites. So, again, I'll show you this in, the, in a minute. But let's just say, for example, I found a, a, an article on biggerplate.com that I think is going to help me understand my subject. I could click a link save the link rather in my XMind or my, my mind map. And that link is just a little signpost here that says, open up this web page, and it tells me that's where I, I've got some extra information. I'm hoping that's opening up and you're seeing that on the screen share. So using the notes and links is very useful, but also you could start to use your maps to help you with personal organization. You could add some information about assignments to do, 
Uh, you could sort of have a little archive of things you've already done. You could add key information about your exams. But the key information is starting to create what I've called down here a single source of truth. So you say my subject is history, and here is all the different things I need to keep track of and monitor and research and pull together around that subject. A single source of truth means you bring everything into one system, and you then will start to build the habit of capturing your notes, tidying them up, connecting them with your master map. And I can tell you 100% you'll be very grateful when it comes around to exam time because you will have the most coherent set of notes, knowledge maps, and master map that you can possibly imagine. And then it's just going to be a case of focusing in on the areas that you think are going to come up in your exam. So let's take a quick look at how that might work as an example. So I, as I say, I didn't have the master map idea when I was at university. I just had lots of subject maps, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but how I'd create a master map now if I went back to university, which I'd love to, is it would look something like this. So again, this is just a little note here in XMind. And that should open up. Oh, there we go. I forgot to click it. That's just going to open up another mind map here, which is my, my master map of, of my subject. So let's just have a quick look at, at this. And this is just a quick mock-up of, of some of the subjects I remember having to study when I was doing my sociology degree. So you might divide yours up differently, but let's say mine is my sociology master map. And I've then got maybe three modules this semester that I'm covering, crime and justice, general politics, and sociology of religion. So within each of those, again, up to you how you do and what you do it, but I might have under crime and justice, okay, who are the key authors that we need to, to think about? So maybe under each one of these, I've got some names. Again, I haven't filled out this map entirely, but you'll, you'll see the point. So uh, I might say, right, this guy, Charles Murray, is key when it comes to crime and justice of sociology. Um, and his key concept is the underclass topics that are important. Again, I've got underclass. And you see I've just got these little notes here. This is telling me I've got one of those subject maps. So this is my master map. And this little symbol is telling me you've got some detail in another map here, Leah. So I'm not necessarily building out all of the information in this master map. I'm giving myself little signposts off to other things. Under my crime and justice module, I may also keep track of my assignments. So maybe I've got an essay that I need to write and I can use the icons in XMind or whatever software I'm using to just show me how far through that process I am, if I completed it. And again, maybe when it's completed, it might move down here into the archive and just be my record of previous assignments that I've completed. So I know where to find that essay uh, once I need to review it. Quick note on exams that I've got coming up. I could also have key questions that I need to ask them for help. So um, why is uh, underclass so key, for example? Whatever your questions might be, you might just start to raise or, or store or record your questions in a, in a box for questions just to know next time you maybe got a one-on-one -on -one with a lecturer or a tutor, you can ask her, why was this concept so important? Could you help me understand this author's perspectives or whatever it might be? So the same sort of system is, is replicated for all of these, but these are just example headings. So in your master map, you can put anything you like, but getting a quick sense of key topics or key subjects, uh, key figures, key dates, whatever it might be, uh, that's going to be a really great place to start. So going back to our presentation, what we then could start to do is uh, link that master map to the subject maps. Now, these are real examples uh, from my degree many years ago, uh, 2006, I think. Um, so these are three examples, and I put them into my master map here to show you. So there's a, a Rwanda case study, a monasticism sort of studying map, and then something where I was planning for an essay. So if we go back to, to our, our subject map here, we're looking for uh, a Rwanda case study. So I think that would be under general politics, maybe. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Key concepts. Ah, there we go. So this was a, a map I created. So under my... Uh, global politics module we were covering sort of three topics all with a sociological sort of a focus aid and violence multilateral development war and gender now as part of that we had a case study into uh, the, the terrible things that happened in Rwanda in the 1990s and if I click this link here I'm then going to hopefully open up uh, a mind map specifically on the Rwanda uh, subject now again this was partly what I captured during a lecture but then it's also what I've then gone and, and researched and built out after the fact. So again, I've got the history of the, the conflict. I've got information about the ethnic segregation. I've got some key information about dates in here. So lots of information in the, in the subject uh, map to help me when I come back to look at it. So 
again, three main strategies. I've used some of the sort of visual symbols and tools in, in the software to, to highlight certain things a little bit more visually. But importantly, this is where I mean linking your, your master map to the detail maps is going to be a really powerful way that when you need to go back a few months later and remind yourself of the Rwanda case study, you've got a map linked in your master map right there. So you can imagine in your master map over time, building up a whole set of case studies. Maybe there are other uh, case studies that we could uh, be saving in here uh, to just kind of keep all of our, our key information right there and ready to hand. And this is where you're starting to get a sense of the total picture of your subject. Another example of the, the detail map we had was our monasticism. Now this was a, a subject I really struggled with, uh, was the sociology of religion, uh, subjects just didn't really capture my imagination uh, but there was again assignments concepts to cover I've got my key people up here I've got a record of who said what and just keeping a quick summary of, of the key figures in this maybe idea and my monasticism map again if I click that it's gonna say fail to open link so uh, let's just see if I can open that more recently that should have been a link to this map, but it might be an out of date link. So this is just another subject map, a detail map to help me with my revision. And again, different style of map, but the same principle was just me capturing my notes on what monasticism is, what are the things that make it relevant for sociological study, etc., etc. And all of these then will link back to that master map. So I'm really building up a, a map of maps and systems here to help me navigate through all of my different subject areas. The final example is going to take us off uh, to an essay plan. So I'll use that to segue into the final section of our, our, our webinar today. But up here in my assignments for crime and justice, I had an essay to write. So the essay was on imprisonment. And I'm going to just pause before I look at that, because we're going to look at essay and assignment planning as our next topic. So we'll come back and look at the essay plan. But hopefully you can see how the master map and then the subject maps can connect together to give you this really nice, coherent, connected set of notes and revision uh, resources. You've got all of the key information you need right at your fingertips and well connected up. So finally, I said we're going to talk about assignments and essay writing. So. This is a, a, a challenging one for lots of people. Um, my challenges were, were a couple of things. Firstly, research. Again, I was a slow reader and I had poor quality notes. So I didn't have a great foundation for my research. I also had an issue of information was everywhere. I'd, I'd bookmark some things in a browser and then forget I'd done it. I would send emails to myself to remember stuff and then lose it in my emails. So information was everywhere. It was in books, it was in online journals, different resources in different places. So research was a challenge and as was the writing. So for me, writing was, was the challenge because I would really struggle to put structure into my writing. And it was the feedback I would get uh, writing essays and assignments was it was more like a, just a stream of consciousness. It wasn't very well structured. Uh, and partly that's probably because as you write things in, you know, like a Word document, it can be very hard to see the sort of the overall flow of things and the structure because you just start writing. Um, and jumping between sections in a Word document when you're actually doing the writing can be very difficult, as is the reordering of that information. So moving things up and down pages in Word, deciding that paragraph six actually needs to be before paragraph three, that kind of thing could be really uh, difficult in in writing tools like Microsoft Word or Pages, whatever it might be. So how can mind mapping help here? Well, the first thing is the research. So researching with mind maps, a little bit like I've showed you, you can bring everything into one place. So a little bit like we saw in our subject maps, you can bring in your ideas, but also key concepts. And you can then start to use that links and notes function to capture websites. So as I showed you earlier, we might link off to uh, websites. It might be academic journals that we found. We might use the notes function uh, to leave ourselves uh, key quotes or key pieces of information. And what it means is we can have all of our information and our research really coherently pulled together in one place. And that's where, again, you're really going to start to build on those knowledge maps that you built in the previous section. So if you think about it, you go through stage one is note taking and lectures. Stage two is turning those notes into something that can start to represent the knowledge map and then connecting those up to your master map. 
once you've done all that, you're going to have a great foundation for your, for your essays and assignments. So your research is probably half done, but at the very least, it's pointing you in the key areas to go and look for extra research. Once you've got that sort of in place and you're ready to structure your sessions, I would suggest you have one mind map for your research and another for actually structuring and planning the, the essay or the assignment. So this, the mind map is going to help you to structure that information. It's going to help you to organize the ideas and the information far more easily than a Word document. You're going to be able to see the structure before you actually get to the writing. And again, I would suggest sort of building clockwise and build on that chronology uh, that we, we talked about earlier. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. So how do you do that yourself? Well, as I said earlier, I would suggest you think in two parts. Firstly, a research map and then a planning map. So the research map is based on concepts. It's about just gathering information. It may become quite big and it may be a little bit messy and that's okay. This is really your kind of scratch pad, your, your thinking area for just getting ideas down and, and sort of moving them around and, and testing what might go into your actual assignment uh, written article. So we then move to the second map, which is our actual planning map. And this again is where we're going to start to think a little bit more chronologically, like the structure of an article. It's going to be an introduction, then this, now this, and a conclusion. And it's there that we're going to start structuring ideas into something resembling the flow of an article or an essay or a report. Again, use those topic notes and links. So add more detail and keep the surface level clear. And I'm going to show you an example of my uh, research map and an essay plan in a second where I'm using both these these notes and, and links functionality. So some quick tips here. You can also do within certain mind mapping software a really great thing which is to export your mind map into Microsoft Word. So I will often suggest to people that they can do all of the structuring and organizing of the ideas and the information in the mind map and then send it over to Microsoft Word or equivalent just to edit and do the printing. Microsoft Word is not a great tool for figuring out your ideas and your information. It's a really great tool for editing and printing. So I'll show you that in just a second as well uh, using this, uh, this particular software. So here's an example of two things. One is the research map and one is the essay planning map. So here is a map that I created for this, this subject, which is the, the underclass, which is a, a sort of sociological concept again, uh, related to crime. And this was, uh, this is an actual mind map. This is from uh, originally 2006 or 2007, uh, although it's now in, in a more modern software. Um, so this is where I, I just had a question, I think, for, for an essay. And the question had these kind of sections. So I just broke down the question. The question might even be in these notes, actually. There we go. So here's, <laughs> here's the question I've put into the notes. So rising crime rates are caused by the growth of an underclass. Uh, and, a, and a bit of... Uh, flesh there. So I've then broken that down into a few different areas to just right at the beginning tell myself these are the areas of the question I need to be thinking about. What I've then started to do was look into journals. I've found maybe uh, three or four articles here uh, and again these are very old links so I'm not sure they'll work um, but you can see I've got a little abstract in the, in the information here. I've got a link to a particular article and then in my map, I've just built out the key concepts that I'm pulling out. So again, this particular article is, is directing me towards maybe some uh, analysis, some information. And you'll see used in the notes here, I've just copied and pasted a huge amount of information from that journal. And it's not that this is going to go into my essay necessarily, but it's really useful food for thought for my essay. It's, it's kind of my notes to self but I'm not having to keep jumping away to something else. I've got all of the information that I think is relevant for my essay or my assignment right here in the map. And you'll see all of these have just got information, notes and hyperlinks under them. And these links will take me off and then we we'll can click this one and just see, does this go anywhere useful? Uh, page not found, yeah, that's probably because it's from 2006. So um, the, the key thing is this is my research map. So over here I had, what are the most important books? Now I just obviously chose these two. Um, and this is where then I'm starting to break down the key components, what kind of the key arguments within those were. And this is just, again, remember my planning and thinking map. Up here then I started to come to, well, what are my questions? What are the topics I haven't quite got my head around or maybe want to look into? So for some reason, corporate crime, uh, I was looking at, I think, the idea that corporate crime was rising. Uh, but can that really be blamed on an underclass and all these sort of things. But the little red flag icon there just to signal to myself, maybe this is an interesting area to look into. 
and then a couple of other notes and questions for myself here. So that's my research map. Now I haven't unfortunately got the original essay or, or essay plan that I wrote, but what I have got is, if you imagine I've done my research map, then I start to do my essay planning map. And this is another actual map from my university degree. So if I click this one, this is a different topic about imprisonment. Um, same sort of module, but different topic. And this was how I then started to actually structure an essay. And I did this with the underclass uh, one as well. I just can't find the essay plan. But this is where you start to see the actual structure of a, a, an essay coming together, including there should be a conclusion up here. So again, this was my exam question or my essay question. And I started to just build out my map ideas around what is the, my introduction paragraph? Who are the people I'm going to reference in this opening paragraph? Once I get into here, I'm then going to sort of suggest my structure for the answer is going to be broken down into these two sections. This is then second paragraph is where I start to take on this section. So you see, I'm starting to build out the structure of my essay. And once I get into it, again, a lot of stuff in here is just my thoughts and related literature. So once you start to answer this piece of the question, Liam, here are your relevant books, journal articles that might help you to make this point more compellingly. So this is where the sort of essay plan meets the research map and you start to structure your ideas and your information and actually how the flow of the article is going to read and all the while keeping your thoughts, your literature references right here and easily to hand in the mind map. Now, as an example, I can also then, once I've done all this, export this into Microsoft Word. I'll just give this a try here and see how it goes. And what the software is going to do is just work around the mind map. It's going to pull all of that information and hopefully send that into a mind map. Oh, there we go. Uh, I can just save to my desktop. Save there. Let's just call it Crime Essay Plan. Does that work? And hopefully, what that's going to do uh, is if I just come out here. Sorry, I'm just having trouble with my screen share here. Let's try this. There we go. So hopefully what you'll see now is uh, an essay plan. This is from the XMind document. Just saved it to my desktop. And what I've now got is the beginnings of an essay. So again, I've got a little bit of work to do here. I can take out all this numbering. I don't need that. But you'll see what I've actually got here is the beginnings, the structure of my essay. I could just start to turn these quotes into more prose. Again, I could just remove the numbering. I don't need that. But importantly, XMind, is, the software, has just sent all of this information into a Word document now. And my job is really to, to edit and print. So this is where exporting to Word a much more coherent set of thoughts and ideas is going to be really powerful. So just focusing on, on that structuring of ideas and information um, and using this uh, structure map to then feed your your actual written document very very powerful use of my mapping software I'm uh, sorry for slightly jumping around there with the screen sharing getting a bit lost but hopefully you're back with me now so hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use my mapping for both researching and pulling together your ideas for an essay or a written assignment and then also how you can use a my map to actually structure your ideas and pretty much get it ready to export into a Word document for the final printing and editing. Finally, by way of conclusion, my final sort of thoughts for, for students watching today are to really just start by capturing and structuring your ideas and information, whether that's live in a, in a lecture or uh, as you start to do some revision, just put anything you can think of or anything you hear into the mind map and you'll be surprised how easily it will start to build up and become a little bit more coherent. Importantly, mind mapping is, is not the answer to everything, but it is a very useful tool. Um, it's really important to just have this in your toolkit. Maybe you have different ways of revising that work better for you, but maybe your note taking leaves a little bit to be desired. So just have a little experiment and just think, right, mind mapping, maybe not for everything, but certainly for some things can be very, very helpful. So next steps for anybody watching today. 
firstly check your email if you've signed up for this webinar you're going to be receiving a, uh, a discount code in the email for our, our pro membership so if you want to access more tutorials and, and benefits on biggerplate.com you'll be able to get that uh, with a reduction if you're interested in maybe bringing mind map training to your school either in the firm form of uh, virtual training uh, virtual training or in terms of on-site workshops for students. We do both of those things and we would love to come and work with you wherever you are in the world. We work all over the place and we would love to come and, uh, and work with the students. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to send to me about this webinar or Bigger Plate in general, please feel free to contact me at liam at biggerplate.com. And in the meantime, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can see coming in the panel. So please feel free to throw in your questions now. I can see you've got a few in there already. So. A uh, quick question is, uh, which software? I knew I'd get asked that. So which software for students? Well, um, there's a lot of different mind mapping software available. Um, software for students we would recommend is uh, the one you're seeing on screen right now. There's a really good software called XMind, which has a, a free version, and also MindMeister, which is an online tool. Again, they have a really nice uh, free account that you can use. So uh, for students, we generally recommend uh, these two products mainly because they're free. They're really nice places to go and, and experiment and explore with mind mapping. Um, some universities will have software already installed perhaps. Um, often students that don't know that it's there. Um, so that can be a bit problematic. But if as an individual you're interested to go and, and try software, uh, I'd recommend those are some good places to start as, as a student. Um, any other questions you've got in here? Uh, question here is what is bigger plate? That's a great question and I'm not surprised you get asked. So uh, a lot of times we get asked this bigger plate is not software. Um, we don't make software and we don't sell software. So what bigger plate is is uh, an independent resource. We, are, we work with all of the, the leading software companies, but we are independent of them. And we provide mind map templates. We provide tutorials and webinars. And we provide training services. All to do with mind mapping. So it's really an independent mind mapping resource. So our goal is to help people get the most out of mind mapping tools and techniques. So. Uh, I believe ever since I had that experience at university, I believe mind mapping tools and mind mapping software is what a lot of us are missing um, in education and also in business. So Bigger Plate really is focused on trying to help people understand what these tools can do, how they might use it, and then hopefully providing them with resources like templates and things to actually help them go and go away and start using it effectively. So uh, Bigger Plate is, is a, a user community. Uh, it's a, well, it's, we say member community. Um, so Bigger Plate has a community of over 175,000, I think, members, um, and it's free to register. And once you're registered, you can download my maps, uh, download maps. You can also upload maps. So if you are creating maps in your university uh, subject, we'd love to see you sharing those my maps on Bigger Plate so that other students can uh, view and download those as well. Um, so I'm hoping that's given you an answer to what is Bigger Plate. Uh, I know some people get confused. They confuse whether Bigger Plate is software or uh, Bigger Plate is something else. Um, so that's hopefully clarified that a little bit. There's a question here uh, introducing how to introduce to students. Uh, okay, so that, that's a really interesting question. Um, I'm guessing that's coming from a, a teacher or a, a maybe an administrator who works at an institution. In terms of introducing to students, I would probably suggest um, firstly check if software exists. This is one of the big problems I'm, I'm seeing all the time. Um, firstly, if, check if software is available because a lot of universities have got monitoring software. It might be quite old, but a lot of universities bought monitoring software in the 2000s or late 2000s, but a lot of students don't know it exists. Um, so let students know it's there is it, and, and that they can get it. Uh, and then maybe ideas for introduction. You could perhaps set an assignment and set the assignment to create a, a mind map. Say, I would like you to go and create a mind map using the software we have in the university uh, of this subject. So set an assignment. Um, it's really great for presentations. So if you are the, the person at the front of the room, if you're the lecturer or the teacher, 
you could use a mind map uh, as your presentation tool. Uh, so you could use the mind map to present. Again, you, you want to get comfortable doing that, but it's a great way of, of presenting. Hopefully you see a little bit of that on the screen today. A good way of presenting big topics and breaking it down into, into more manageable amounts of information. Um, so I'd suggest sort of firstly make sure they know what mind mapping is, check if there's software available to them, let them know it's available, and then give them a task to sort of get their teeth stuck into. Either set them an assignment to map out a subject, use mind maps yourself to present, or use mind maps um, to collaborate. So again, you could even facilitate discussions, and, and like I am at the moment, capture their perspectives on a screen in real time using the mind map. So uh, nice ways of kind of engaging people in the, in the discussion uh, and in the, the conversation. Um, if you want any help with introducing mind mapping to your students, of course, there is also the option of uh, give bigger plate a call, and we'll be uh, happy to try and help with that uh, if that's any use to you as well. Uh, okay, I've got another couple of minutes. Education maps on bigger plate. Yeah, so um, the question here is education maps on bigger plate. So we didn't really look at bigger plate uh, very much, so let me just go to bigger plate and just show you. Uh, how that works. Let's get rid of, uh, let's just share my whole screen a second uh, and come to biggerplate.com. So this is biggerplate.com. If I go to the home page, uh, you'll see here, hopefully in a second, just close down some of these other things. Um, so biggerplate is, is the home of mind mapping. And as it says here, you can search thousands of free mind map templates and examples. But if you just scroll down here, you've got a little area here that says, well, let's go have a look specifically at the education mind maps. So I find some education mind maps, we've got 4,000 plus, and these are mind maps created and shared by students and teachers and, and people from all over the world covering a really wide range of, of uh, topics. So um, you could filter by category. So maybe I, I wanna look for history mind maps. I can click that and then I'm just looking at sort of history focused mind maps here. And what I could also do is then filter by software. So if you have got a particular software, you could say, if we're using XMind today, let's apply a filter. So I'm only looking at history maps in the XMind format, something here on Napoleon. So maybe I'm interested in that one. I can click that mind map. And maybe I think, yep, yeah, this is going to be useful. I'm going to say to download that. Now to download the mind map, you're going to have to be logged in as a member of Bigger Plate. That again is free to do. So I can click download that for XMind. That's going to download that onto my computer, which you can see here. And if I click this now, it should open up that mind map in the XMind software that I've been using to present to you today. So here we are. So here's a mind map that somebody else has created about Napoleon. Uh, it looks like it's in French. So that's going to make my life a little bit more challenging. But the key idea here, and this is the original idea of Bigger Plate, is I can download this mind map that somebody else has created, but then I can actually start to add my own information, build out my thinking or get rid of the things I don't need move things around chop and change so this is where the original idea of bigger plate is really being sort of displayed is finding a skeleton or a starting point some inspiration on bigger plate and then really making it your own maybe you want to even change the, the color scheme and, and the, the, the style of the map so again you, you could change the entire theme uh, to, to just be something that you're a little bit more interested in so let's change that so you can start to personalize that information in the software much more uh, to your own preferences. But all of that is free to do from Bigger Plate in terms of finding my maps. And again, if you find one map on Napoleon, maybe you're interested in, in other things along the same line. So you could go and explore the library. And there's a lot of content there for you to, to get your teeth into, uh, covering business, education, uh, personal improvement, all sorts of different things. So uh, well worth going and having a look at the Bigger Plate library and hopefully uh, that has answered your question around are there education maps on Bigger Plate? I'd be pretty confident that you could search for pretty much anything on Bigger Plate now and you'll find something. Uh, and if you can't and you create a map, then we'd obviously love it if you could share that with us. So I think that's pretty much my time up. So I'm going to uh, pause right now and just uh, zoom back out on this and, and really finish by thanking you for, for joining me today on this webinar. I'm hoping I've given you some ideas around how my mapping tools can be used to help students. Uh, both with note taking, knowledge building, and with written assignments, essays, things like that. Uh, as I said before, if you have any questions or comments on this webinar or about Bigger Plate in general, I'd be very happy to hear from you. And you can reach me at liam at biggerplate.com 
on email. Uh, until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching and take care.